The rest of our team of multiverse jumping allies returned to Dimension A016 for a meeting. Alexis had told them that I had an important announcement to make. An hour or so after Kayla and I had returned from our battle with Tarsa, the gathering group was nearly settled. We'd moved inside to the meeting room of the Sharp Tank, so I stood with Alexis on one side of me and the Archon Demon, Torali, on the other. Around 20 people sat at the large rectangular chrome table before me. When the room went quiet, I looked to Kayla for reassurance. She smiled and nodded. I'd taken a moment to talk this through with her and our team leaders, Alexis and Sterling, before the group had gathered. My love Kayla had been shocked at first, but as I'd explained my reasoning, she quickly deemed it the right thing to do, at least for now. Sterling had thought it was brilliant. That had been comforting, but had also not been particularly surprising. Alexis was the one I anticipated more resistance from. She was more bothered by the plan, but even she grudgingly agreed that it made sense and was what was best for my world. She did suggest an addition, however, which I must also agree was very wise. All right, everyone, Alexis said. I know some of you still need recovery time after the battle with Cypheramov and her forces and are eager to come up with a plan to take down Tarsa, but before we get to that, Taryn has an announcement one that will have a significant impact on our war with the Archons, and his own deal, that you're all aware of, with Fanter... with... Torali. Taren? All eyes then fell on me. I took one last look at Torali before addressing the group. She looked confused and even a little nervous. I assumed she already knew what I was going to say, but perhaps not. I began... As you all know, I had a deal with the Archon Torali here to have a beast battle for the Overseer powers of my world. If she won, I gave her my Overseer abilities. If I won, she let us kill her to rid the multiverse of one more of her family. She even provided me with this. I pulled out and raised a knife she'd given me, setting it on the table. It's a weapon that could actually harm her, though now I don't think it will be necessary. From the beginning, I had a sense that Torali was not like her siblings. Through conversations with many of you since this ordeal began, I've felt more confident that my gut reaction to her was right. While she has admitted to having gone on sieges of a few universes, she has spent much of her time since taking physical form living as a rather upstanding and protective citizen of the village Sethiel in my world. You also all likely saw how she fought to defend it from Cypheramov. She has even saved my life personally twice now. Torlai suddenly raised a finger. Not to interrupt, but if this helps anyone's opinion of me, I only ever raided worlds that had no sentient life. That caught me off guard. What, really? Even Alexis had a rather shocked expression hearing that. Benny Sharp called out. That sounds like she's pulling to me and is trying to retcon stuff she regrets doing. No, seriously, she responded. I never had much interest in destroying universes, but knew the other Archons would grow suspicious of me if I didn't. So I just went after a few where monsters had already wiped out all humans and the like. This was going to help my case to the group even more, but I asked, Why didn't you ever just tell us that? Well, I didn't think any of you would ever think highly enough of an Archon to believe it. I just wanted to get away from my siblings and from you lot by taking your world and locking you all out of it so I didn't have to deal with any of this... Multiverse war nonsense. I smiled more confidently than I'd been able to upon starting this announcement. Well, I believe that makes this decision much easier and leads me to my next point. When an Archon Demon has the Overseer abilities of a given universe, they can lock even the other Archons out of that universe. The only being they can't lock out is Alexis, given her powers as the Reaper. Now that the other Archons know Torali has essentially betrayed them, the only reason they haven't come to this world to punish her is because, as you may have noticed by the Overseer runes on her arm, Astra gave her her own Overseer abilities temporarily in an attempt to trap Cypheramov. This didn't result as we'd hoped, but at least it means she's been able to lock the Archons out of this world. As soon as she returns the abilities to Astra, they will soon after be able to break through and come take her. I took a deep breath before finally saying, But, if I make her the overseer of my world, that won't be a problem. I saw some confusion, most so from Torali. Are you serious? You're just gonna give me the powers willingly. I have thought for a while that I'm not the right overseer for my world anymore. 
While I do want what's best for it and have done good things for it, I spend much of my time trekking off with this team to deal with other matters, such as the other Archons, across the multiverse. My world deserves an overseer that stays there watching over it full time. With you there, you can guarantee the other Archons never get into threaten it, and you won't leave yourself because you'd risk them finding and killing you. Plus, it gives you what you wanted from the beginning, to spend your life in my world. Torlai looked around the room as if she was now looking for anyone to protest. Dresden raised a hand. While I do see the merit in this decision and am obviously quite in favor of making efforts to help someone redeem themselves, I feel it should be noted that the Archons are known as Demons of Deception. What if this has all been an elaborate ruse? What contingency plans are in place in case she does do harm to your world or tries to lock the rest of us out? That is a fair point, but as mentioned, no matter how powerful she is, she will be unable to lock the Reaper out of T905. Plus, Alexis had an idea that will help ensure Torlai doesn't betray us. Torlai will make an overseer's bond with Astra. Many in the group nodded at this idea. The first thing that came to mind in regards to overseer's bonds was how Dresden had used thousands of them that he'd made to kill most of the multiverse's overseers, but I avoided mentioning it. Everyone in the group was familiar with these binding deals. If not fulfilled properly, an overseer would be badly and painfully scarred for going back on their word once a bond was made. I continued, Torlai will return Astra's overseer abilities to her and make a bond that states, in exchange for the overseer abilities of my world, she is never allowed to lock any member of our group out of it. If she does, the bond punishment will trigger, Astra will know it and be able to send Alexis in immediately to gather forces in my world and attack Torlai. Dresden gave one quick nod, showing his approval, but Benny asked, so wait, does this mean you ain't gonna do your big crazy Pokemon battle thing with Torlai? Cause I was kinda looking forward to watching that. I grinned. Well, the stakes for it may be gone, but if Torlai is willing, I'd be interested in going through with it, just to see who would have won. I think my new mount, Wellerman, may try to eat me if I don't let him fight your monsters, Torlai. Wait, wait, Torlai interrupted. So this is really happening. You're just giving me the Overseer abilities of T905. I nodded. We'll be keeping an eye on you, but yes. I honestly believe you'll do a great job protecting my wor- uh, Protecting our world. In shocked excitement, she leapt onto me and hugged me. I swear to you, you won't regret this. She stepped back. And yes, I think we should see who would win our little beast brawl. I mean, to be fair, I always knew how to win, but we might as well have a go. Don't be so sure. I have a few surprises in the works and still need to get one more creature for my team, but I do know exactly where I'm going to get it. After mine and Kayla's bout with Tarsa today, I've realized that I'm tired of always being threatened by slime monsters. It's about time I had a friendly one on my side. We all talked through a few more details, but overall, everyone was very accepting of the idea. Many even liked the fact that we essentially now had an Archon on our team. The intention wasn't to bring her out of my world for combat with the others anytime soon, but having that as an option was certainly an encouraging notion. Through this whole ordeal with Torlai, we may have unleashed Tarsa onto the multiverse, but we had also technically taken two more Archon demons off the battlefield, with Cypheramov slain and Torlai on our side. We deemed that was reason enough to celebrate, so we agreed to have the whole Sharp Gang come to watch the Beast Brawl when it happened. Though I wasn't ready quite yet. We took a few more days to get everything in place. Torlai returned the A016 Overseer abilities to Astra at the same moment I gave those of T905 to her. She immediately made a portal back to my world and constructed the energetic locks to keep the Archons out. We'd been concerned that the Archons would soon after come to A016 looking for Torlai, once the lock keeping them out was gone, but they never appeared. We assumed that they were too busy searching for Tarsa. I brought Torlai to the Arctic base of the Slayers of Cursed Predators in our world. I thanked them for their help in the battle against Cypheramov and introduced them to the new overseer they'd be working with. They were hesitant about the change, but she did a surprisingly good job making them warm up to her quickly. 
She was ecstatic to be in their base, as she'd observed this facility from the non-physical realm, but had never come to it since taking physical form, because she figured they'd be able to decipher that she was an Archon quite quickly. Their group was very well versed in the paranormal and anomalous elements of existence. With my vouching for Torelai, along with her own surprisingly personable demeanor, her origins didn't seem to concern the Slayers. They showed her around the facility to see the incredible, unique, and sometimes vicious creatures they contained and studied. Eventually, I split off from the group that was showing her around to ask other members of their ranks about a certain slime creature I knew them to have on site, one of the rare beasts that they allowed to roam the facility freely due to its incredibly kind and friendly nature. If they allowed it, I figured it could be a perfect summon to round out my team. Part of me almost wished that the so-called unkillable dragon that Dresden Kayla and I had once slain together was still alive to make a bond with, but I quickly realized a monster that vile would never willingly align with me. That dragon was as much a demon as the worst of the Archons. Thankfully, even though I'd once controlled my Beast Summoner abilities using my Overseer runes, Astra had been able to help me reconfigure them so that I could keep use of them after I gave up the Overseer energy of T905. It didn't even take much time to get used to the change, as Astra made it so that glowing rings, similar to that of an Overseer, would appear when I activated the ability. It was as though my control over it barely changed. Plus, I had an idea for how to amplify the ability even more, through something an armor-crafting friend of mine had been working on for me. Once my bond with the Slayer's friendly slime creature was made, I had Torelai make a portal back to my own village to meet with Vasilia Kuznet. She had two different projects waiting for me, and I was ecstatic that she'd actually been able to complete both. One I'd been very skeptical of. This, Theron, is the armor you requested, forged from the hide of the Ternamuk. Is not quite my finest work, I admit, but that is because I had most of my attention lately on this. She handed me a glove with a round purple and yellow device attached to its top. She opened it up and showed me that inside was a rainbow-colored glimmering stone. I couldn't hold back a massive smile. You actually did it! How? D did one of your relatives or ancestors have writings from the days of the Dragon Tamer tournaments? They did not, but I had built an armor a while back that amplified the abilities of whoever wore it. Making this enchanted stone was a fairly similar process. Technically, I cannot guarantee it will work on your monsters as intended until you test it, but really, I made it, so I know it will work. It is some of my best sorcery yet. I was incredibly grateful. I had asked Vasilia months back if she knew anything about legendary stones forged by sorcerers a thousand years ago in our world. They were used in dragon battle competitions that used to occur to give warriors mounts an extra elevated edge in the battle. Vasilia had then become obsessed with the idea of making one herself, but it was only recently, when my agreement with Torelai had been made, that she dove deeper into trying to make one. Now, I really had one in my hand. They had been called Magnus Stones back in the old days, but Vasilia asked that her version possess her own title. With that armor and new device in my possession, I was ready for my brawl with Torelai. But we ended up pushing it off a few more days because of an overdue event finally occurring. My former dragon mount, Violet, finally gave birth to a healthy, adorable, new Violet Portal Leaper dragon. We called him Lavender, or Lav for short, and he quickly proved to be just as energetic and friendly as his mother. Within a day, he had even gotten used to his wings and was puttering through the air around my village. Seeing the little creature ready to enjoy life in my world, I felt that much better knowing my realm would be safe from the Archon Demons. I could go off and help other dimensions knowing full well that this little guy and everyone I cared about in my world were looked after. Finally, the day came. Our entire team met up in the wilds a ways outside of Seathiel. Benny even prepared a set of large portable television screens and an array of flying cameras to soar around the battle as it was underway, so that the rest of the team could have a better view, even if the fights went far off into the skies above. We also invited whoever in the Slayers of Cursed Predators wanted to observe, as well as Captain Darable and his crew. My Overseer predecessor, Eulidas, was not pleased to see that I'd handed the Overseer abilities of this world to a demon, but he was easily displeased, so I didn't take it personally. 
We found a place where Torilai and I could stand on opposing cliff ledges a short ways from each other. I was there with my battle-hungry mount, Wellerman, at the ready. I hadn't yet tested Vasilia's device on him, but I was confident in her abilities. I nodded to Benny and he flew up between us, in front of the crowd watching from the ground. Alright folks, we is gathered here today to watch a bunch of monsters beat the snot out of each other in the morally questionable beast brawl. But don't worry, they ain't gonna be fighting to the death, just until one of the monster trainers here taps their creature out, cause they figure it's getting beaten up too much. They each got five monsters to work with. Apparently Tayron was only supposed to use monsters from his world in the original agreement. He's got some from other worlds, but Torilai has said she's gonna let that slide. That caught me off guard. I hadn't even remembered that that had been part of the deal. I looked over to her and Torilai shrugged and waved a hand, showing that she didn't care. Benny went on. As soon as someone has tapped out five of their beasties, their opponent is the winner. In this corner, we have the Beast Summoner himself, former overseer of T905 and all-around great guy, Tayron Janova. I hadn't been expecting an introduction like that, but waved as most of the crowd clapped. Benny continued. And in this corner, we got the Archon Demon who decided we was a cooler group to hang out with than our own family, Torilai McFantorell, which is your last name now, I'm locking that in as canon. The clapping for her was a bit less enthusiastic, except from Astra, who stood up and cheered. Benny turned to us. Fighters, get your first monsters ready. Torilai called over to me. I'll give you a little edge, Tairon. I'll choose first. She gave a sharp whistle and her bird familiar, Hunter, cawed out. The sound waves took physical form and turned into red rings, swirling into a sphere that grew and grew until it burst and revealed Torilai's flaming demon general beast, Helsgarot. The skull-headed, sword-tailed monster was at least a hundred feet long, standing on all fours at roughly forty feet tall. It was around the size of Gojiralith, but I wasn't ready to call him into play yet. Besides, I had aligned with Wellerman specifically to face this fire demon. Plus, even if he wasn't yet powerful enough to defeat it, he soon would be. I call, I call upon, upon the aid, aid of Wellerman, Wellerman. Summon, summon forth, forth great, great beast. beast. Wellerman, already standing beside me, rolled his eyes as blue light swelled around him, then disappeared, since he didn't need to be teleported anywhere. I could now feel what Wellerman was feeling. His determination and lust for a fight was palpable. Benny raised an arm in the air. All right, brawlers. Crowd is getting bored, so go kick a gourd. Begin! Wellerman burst off the cliff next to me and soared directly towards its target, standing behind Torilai. Helskarot leapt off the cliff, spinning through the air towards Wellerman. Its speed concerned me, but I was quickly reminded just how much faster Wellerman was. Helskarot's coming blade looked like it could cut Wellerman in half, but he effortlessly evaded the swipe, soaring up above the creature as it fell towards the forest below. It stopped its spin as it fell, aiming its four paws up at Wellerman, shooting clumps of magma out of them. Wellerman soared around them all and spat a beam of freezing water right into its upper left paw. The magma within sizzled and hardened to stone, though it was able to slam another paw into that one, pouring more magma into it to heat it back up. The beast crashed to the ground on its back, shaking the earth, but not seeming to harm it. Helskarot spun in a circle, slicing down all the trees around it with its tail. It then scooped a few felled trees onto the top of its tail. Flames burst from it and it ignited the trees, then it hurled them into the air at Wellerman. They came at him with a perfect gap between them to tuck his wings and dive through, but as soon as he did, Helskarot shot a beam of magma right at the opening. Wellerman didn't slow, he just shot more freezing water to harden the magma, which worked but meant he was met with clumps of stone hurling towards him. He crashed into them and I felt as though someone had just hurled rocks at my head and shoulders. He lost control of his flight and fell towards Helskarot. The beast turned the face of its tail blade and spun around. He smacked Wellerman out of the air and sent him crashing through a dozen more trees. Before Wellerman could get up, Helskarot charged over and stomped a paw down onto my dragon. I felt the searing heat of its magma against my chest and it was near unbearable. Wellerman spat more water into Helskarot's face, but the beast just turned its head away as it continued to press its claw down on Wellerman, with more magma spilling out across his flesh. Torilai yelled over to me, I think your little water dragon has had enough already. It's no match for one of my demon generals. I placed a hand on top of the glove Vasilia had given me. He's not finished yet. I call, I call upon, upon the, power the power of the Kuznet, of the Kuznet Stone. Stone. Elevate, Elevate the great, the great beast, beast Wellerman. Wellerman. 
Suddenly, a rainbow of lights burst from my hand. Simultaneously, the same light swirled around Wellerman. He went from struggling to grinning eagerly. As his body grew, his head transformed, and the protrusions on his back had holes open in them, ones that he aimed towards Helskarot. From them suddenly shot two cannons of water that were forceful enough to knock the demon right off of Wellerman. My dragon wiped the magma off his chest and leapt into the air on newly formed wings. His tail was far broader now, and Wellerman looked down at it. We could both feel there was some new ability available for him. The odds had definitely just been evened, but to give my summon an extra surge of inspiration, I started to sing his favorite tune. There once was a ship that put to sea, the name of the ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew up her bow, dip down, oh blow, my bully boys blow. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. As I sang, a ball of swirling mystic waters churned, held on the face of Wellerman's tail. Helsgrot stood on its hind legs, aimed its maw and two paws at Wellerman, then fired a beam of magma and bolts of flames from its hands. Wellerman spun in a circle twice, then used the momentum to hurl a massive sphere of water at the coming magma. The ball soared right through it, gathering the hardened magma inside it and slamming it into Helskarot. The Demon General was once again knocked backwards. The creature got up, more slowly than before, and was clearly shivering. It coughed, and instead of magma, only water came out. Before it had fully recovered, Wellerman soared at lightning speed right into its side and tackled the creature. It tried to swing its tail at Wellerman, but my summon chomped into the flesh of its tail and flew straight upwards. Despite still being smaller than the demon, Wellerman managed to lift the creature into the air. He swung himself around, spinning Helskarot over his head, then slammed the monster onto its back into the dirt again. That didn't hurt the demon much, but it did make easy targets out of its other paws. Wellerman breathed and shot more beams of water from its mouth and the cannons on its back directly into Helskarot's hind feet, solidifying the rest of the magma in its body. The demon moaned angrily, and seemed to be struggling to pick itself back up. It managed to roll over, but Wellerman started showing off just how impressive his speed was. He started swooping in and slamming his body into the creature's knees and head and tail. With each strike, he shot a small burst of water from the cannons on his back to cool Helskarot off even more. The demon tried to get hits on Wellerman, but with no magma to spit and its movements slowed, it was little more than a helpless target for my beast. After a few minutes of this, Wellerman started readying up another ball of water on its tail. Helskarot was stumbling and barely staying upright, but before my beast hurled its projectile, Torlai called out, Alright, alright, we yield! Helskarot, go horm up. She whistled and her bird familiar cawed again. The sound waves gathered around Helskarot until it was fully immersed, then they cleared and the demon was gone. The crowd cheered for my and Wellerman's victory. Torlai said, Well done, I didn't expect your little creature to be so fast. But if you want to see real speed, I'll gladly show it to you. Hunter, flith the form. She gave a long, then short, quick whistle. Her demon cawed out once again, but this time, the sound waves hardened into black rings in front of the bird. It soared through them and its body started to grow and transform as it did. It shifted into a massive blue draconic raven. In a show of its might, it flapped its wings and flew past me so fast that the wind nearly knocked me off my feet. Even Wellerman had never shown off speed that fast. Maybe with his new Kuznet stone upgrade he could outfly it, but either way, this was not going to be an easy match. We may have taken the first round, but this brawl was just beginning. We are now down to one episode remaining in The Summoner's Beasts and one episode remaining to Myth Lethal, which will be coming out on Monday. I think I'm going to turn both Myth Lethal and The Summoner's Beasts into a book, but we'll have to see with The Summoner's Beasts because there's a lot more copy written stuff in it. I mean, maybe there's enough changes to make it fall into fair use, but I don't know, I'll figure it out. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote a friend of mine shared about success, which is that there is no secret to success. Consistency over intensity 
progress over perfection and fundamentals over fads. That over and over again are what will get you success. Though I do feel inclined to add that you can leverage fads to your benefit. The Illustrator React series, which helped this channel blow up in the first place, was based on a fad that was happening at the time of professionals reacting to things in their industry, and that got this channel to take off, and then because I had been consistent for a year building the channel, and was staying consistent, and had improved my fundamentals, that helped maintain the brief jump of success that I got from using a fad. Anyway, I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday, the finale of Mythalethal. Goodbye.